There's two components to the experiment, the microscopy and the biology. The microscopy should not be a concern. You should only have to worry about the biology. That, that would be the aim of the facility. Microscopy has very close links with the Centre for Gene Regulation and Expression. In the GRE division, people are very interested in how genes are switched on and how they code for proteins, and how the cell is regulated. We have a wide range of microscopes within the facility. Um, these might vary from fluorescence microscopes, which run very quickly and allow for a high turnover of our samples, uh, through to ultra-high resolution electron microscopes that enable us to look at very high detail in the cells. In fluorescence microscopy, you fire an intense beam of light at your sample, which would be labelled with a fluorescent probe or fluorescent protein. This gives off secondary photons that you would then detect with a camera. We also have some very high specification wide field microscopes. These are designed for speed. We can do a variety of techniques with the light microscope. We can take time-lapse images and create movies of our samples, or we can use the microscope to penetrate into the sample and collect optical sections. We can then 3D render these later to create three-dimensional structures and look inside the cellular tissue to try and understand something about its function and morphology. Hello, hello. Brilliant. In the electron microscope facility, we have two state-of-the-art scanning electron microscopes and two transmission electron microscopes. Cells are reasonably resilient to the effects of light, mainly because we've evolved in the presence of the sun. They're far less resilient to being exposed to electrons. Furthermore, for the electron beam to travel in the microscope from the electron gun to the sample, we need to create a vacuum, which has the effect of dehydrating the sample and changing its structure. So although electron microscopy enables us to see an amazing level of fine detail in our biological structures, it's a very time-consuming process in terms of how long it takes for us to prepare the samples. We may choose to chemically fix these samples, uh, whereby chemicals are applied that stabilize the molecules in the cell and preserve their integrity. Uh, another option available to us is to freeze the samples very, very rapidly in liquid nitrogen uh, to replace the water. For transmission electron microscopy, we might also need to thinly slice or section the sample to reveal its internal structures. These sections are usually several tens of nanometers thick. In scanning electron microscopy, we coat the surface of the sample with a fine layer of gold. Uh, electrons from the electron gun cause these electrons in the gold to be released, and you pick these up with your detector. So it's a very good technique for visualizing the fine structure of the surface of your sample. The other nice thing with scanning electron microscopy is that you can start at very low magnification, maybe just 10 or 20 times, and you can zoom right in to maybe 10 or 20,000 times magnification. So this allows you to see the whole organism right into something very specific. The best uh, light microscope has a resolving power of about a quarter of a micrometer, uh, whereas the best electron microscope can resolve structures within fractions of nanometers. Uh, so a micrometer, which is a common unit of measurement in biology, is a millionth of a meter, uh, whereas a nanometer is a millionth of a millimeter. The best way to think of microscopy is both uh, as an image and as a, a map of numbers. Um, most people see a micrograph uh, and they just see a pretty picture. Whereas actually microscopy is not just the picture, but it's the values of the pixels on that image that make up the picture. And there's as much information hidden in those values as there is in the thing you actually see. Some research is really abstract because it's mostly such fine details it's so infinitely small it's 
closer still in time. That moment in time. When you study life at the molecular level, it completely affects the way you perceive the whole world around about you. It makes you feel that we're all actually part of some larger system. To see what the individual cells are doing feels like an enormous privilege. It's pretty spectacular to be able to see what biology can achieve. I think what it gives you is a very strong sense of the wonder that is life, and the value that is life.